It's been a long time coming, but Netflix has finally released Monique's stand-up comedy special, I Am Monique. In the special, she discusses her background on how she became the woman that she is known today. Most notably, Monique would avoid discussing her beef with Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey, and in reference to her past Netflix boycott, Monique would end her special by telling her audience that she's not Dave Chappelle, Amy Schumer, or Chris Rock, and her critics are right because her name is Monique. Today we have our company hype analysts, Danielle Miller, Capone, and Pierre call into the show to give their thoughts and reactions. Now, before we play this clip, I just want to note that this will be a spoiler alert for anyone that has not watched the special. But let's take a look at this clip. I had to accept the fact that my mother was a goddamn gambler and would gamble away any mother thing. My oldest brother was a goddamn molester. My other brother signed my name to motherfucking documents and f with my reputation. I don't judge it, it's just what the f it is. When motherfuckers told me, you're no Dave Chappelle, you're no Amy Schumer, you're no Chris Rock, them motherfuckers was right because my name is Monique. Now, I know we talked about this before the special came out. Pierre, specifically, you said, you know, we, we need to talk about it after the special is released. So I'm going to come to you first, Pierre. What's your reaction to it? And did you think the special lived up to the hype? Um, well, she dropped the F-bomb, the MF-bomb, the, the B-bomb, the C-bomb, the D-bomb, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, bomb, the bomb, the bomb, the bomb, the bomb, the bomb. I think she's too funny of a comedian to, uh, to be overshadowed. It overshadowed her act. You heard it from the clip. I don't know how many beefs they did in the clip, but you heard it. A lot of MFs was dropped through that whole thing, man. And I just think it was it's too much. It was overload. Now, her fans are going to enjoy it. That's what they like. They came for that. But I don't know if she's going to necessarily garner any new fans. You know, not with that language. That language, it was way overboard. And I like cursing. I have a problem with cursing. But when it is constantly cursing, 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 it reminds me of uh, making love. You know, and that comes from, yeah, I mean, listen up, Symphony. You know, if, if a guy is ready to do his thing, it's all bam, 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 baby, slow down. We get the little rhythm in this. Bam, 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 bam. Brother, slow down. Same as that. Sometimes overload. Got it. Danielle, let me bring you in. Same. Bam, 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 bam. I I was trying my hardest not to laugh, Danielle, but you know, Pierre is going to come with the energy. Dia, let me come to you. After watching the special, do you think it lived up to, to the hype? And what's your what's your reaction to it? My reaction to it is hand claps. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, I think it was funny. Um, and yes, I will say there was a lot of cussing in it, but that's Monique. Like from what I could remember from she was doing stand up um, and the Yo Mama jokes and stuff like that. She always did that flow of, of cussing. Her comedy specials are very heavy. And then you have other co female comedians as well that use that cussing very heavy, but they're not, they don't make me laugh. Let me say that. They don't make me laugh. From the comedy special open to the end, I laughed. She had her moments. I laughed. And the crazy thing is, I'm going to throw this out. You know, Pia, I'm going to challenge you. Because when you were talking about the amount of F-bombs that were dropping, my mind immediately went on Bernie Mac. And we consider him mad funny. And Bernie was like the king of dropping those F-bombs. So with Monique, I don't see the issue. It was funny. Um, I don't remember seeing much PR surrounding the special, but I do remember her saying that after you watch the special, you will understand me as a person more. And I can agree with that. I think that she gave insight to her life in a comedic way. Yeah, Danielle, and I think you made a great point that I want to highlight. I think the only people that I saw talking about it was here at Comedy Hype. So, you know, Comedy Hype was covering it before and we're covering it after. Just want to put a little shameless uh, plug right there. But Capone, let me let me come to you. Same question, you know, and, and I'll, I'll get your reaction to, to the clip that we saw. But also, you know, we saw Lee Daniels was in attendance. We know there was some controversy there between them. Something else that we also talked about was we noticed in the trailer that she did not mention any controversy with Tyler Perry or Oprah. And now that we've seen the special, she also did not make, I think she made two references about them, but, you know, didn't really deep dive. As a comedian, do you think that was a missed opportunity to, to kind of discuss those things from a comedic lens, you know, that people have been seeing for, for a while now? So to that question, um, no, I think it was very brilliant that you don't have to rely on, uh, this in Oprah or Tyler Perry. Uh, Hunter Lee Daniels made up at a show 
uh, that he came to and uh, she announced it on stage. So that was a good thing that he still supports his friend. And uh, she was very thankful to that. Now, um, I personally, as a comedian who uses a lot of foul language, I just think that it was excessive. She used a lot of excessive, unnecessary. There's a difference between someone who curses and someone who curses unnecessary. There was like words that were there that didn't have to have a curse word in it. And it was the same curse all the time. So, um, like I said, I curse a lot, and, and, but I think that I've actually uh, professed, or should I say, my professionalism of cursing is not to just curse unnecessarily. And right. for her to be a veteran, and this is my opinion, I just think it was a lot of unnecessary. I'm not going to lie, I didn't watch the whole thing, but the, the stuff that I saw, it was, if you count the curses, it was more curses than actual words. Now, Pierre, before I even go to the next question, because Capone responded to Nia, I want to I wanna kick it over to you just in case you wanted to respond as well, Pierre. Yeah, yeah, Danielle, Danielle doesn't know how comedy goes. She just, she just put the, compare Bernie Mac and Monique as saying it's the same thing because they both hurt. <laughs> they cuss a lot. From when I was younger watching Monique, I didn't see the change in her style. She cusses a lot. Same thing with Bernie Mac. Bernie cusses a lot. Well, I know a mass murderer. Richard Pryor shot cursed people. a lot. I, I know a mass murderer who shot three people, and I know a mass murderer who shot thirty. If it's both <laughs> mass murderers, okay, but thir three and thirty is different. So, you like that, Capone? You like that, Capone? Now, Pierre, let me go. Go ahead, Danielle. How can I ask the question? Is it just a lot because of her gender? No, not at all. Now, that's what you wanted to be. No, that ain't what I want it to be. That's the question that I'm asking. Right. That's not Can you not digest it properly because of agenda? No, because Samoa cusses a lot too. Right. So I think but, Samoa cusses more I, than Monique. No, no, no. It's cuss, no, no way. No way. That's what you want it to be. It's, it's cursing a lot and it's cursing excessively. Yeah. Now, Pierre, uh, I just wanted to make sure I gave you all a chance to respond to one another. But Pierre, let me let me ask you this question. So, you know, we heard Monique say clear, you know, she's not Dave Chappelle, she's not Amy Schumer, she's not Chris Rock, comparing specials from, you know, Monique had controversy, Chris Rock had controversy, Chris Rock took that opportunity to really expound on his special talking about the slap, whereas Monique, we didn't see her really go in on those, you know, those moments that we saw all along between her and Tyler Perry and Oprah and things like that. Do you think it was a missed opportunity that she didn't cover those things, but for only two quick references? Well, let me be honest with you. If it wasn't going to be funny, there wasn't no missed opportunity. If she was going to make it, if she wasn't going to call it in a funny way, then she did the proper thing. Um, Monique can make her, cho her own choices. If she felt like she didn't want to bring it up, then that's fine. Um, you know, the elephant in the room with Chris Rock was a slap. It was a year later was, uh, during the Oscar. Dave Chappelle would bring up stuff about being, you know, criticized by the LGBT you know, community. This is just choices you make. If you want to bring up what's, the, what's called the elephant in the room, you do it. She did talk about uh, Lee Daniels, you know, so it ain't like she, they, she didn't talk about nothing. It ain't like she was like, oh, she ain't got to bring up nothing. She brought up Lee Daniels. She just chose not to bring up Oprah and Tyler. That's all she did, you know. So she has every right to do that. Were you were you disappointed to see that she didn't talk about? Because I know beforehand, you know, we were kind of talking about we wanted to see that, at least in the trailer or something. Were you disappointed that she didn't kind of touch on those things? I was disappointed in how much she cursed. Damn, that's all I was disappointed. I'm going to be dead ass with you. That's it. So, Danielle, let me let me come along to you then. So we only saw two quick references about her controversies. Let me make sure I'm very specific about controversies, not anything particular to Oprah or Tyler Perry. Do you think it was a missed opportunity there that she didn't expand on it the way that we saw Chris Rock expand on his controversy? This is just my opinion. I'm going to say what I, I, from what I understand from it. I think she did address it, but I think she addressed it without calling names which was very important because you don't want your, this comedy special to be overshadowed by the names of Tyler Perry and Oprah. And then you feeding into the narrative of you being the problem and you always using an opportunity to speak on them. But I think she, she addressed the situations in very strategic ways. And it, with that explaining herself, like when she said in one of her jokes, she don't like bullies. And then she went on to explain an experience when she was younger or why people can talk about her and she don't feel anything about it because of 
the class that she was put in when she was younger, or even when she spoke about, um, I'm trying to remember the last point. Hold on, I wrote it down. Um, strong, being a strong black woman and why she is the way that she, why she was the way that she was and how she had to learn to unfold from that. So I think she strategically addresses those controversies without calling any names. And of course, um, she was able to call out Lee Daniels because they're on level terms now. Um, and he was there, he, 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 he was able, he's, he's in support of her now. So yeah, I think she did it. I think she did it very smartly, in my opinion, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you make a great point. Just those, those hidden uh, responses to all the things we've seen. So yeah, I definitely saw that as well. Capone, let me come to you. So, you know, we've been built up to this moment where we saw Monique and Netflix going back to back. You know, Monique has won because she got what she wanted. She got her Netflix special. What would you want to see Monique do next? What do you think, you know, what do you think should be her next move? She should, uh, and I mean this in the most respectful way, hire a writer. Monique is very talented and funny. Um, I think the fact that she won, she should have overcome all of the things that she talked about, because she talked about them before. It ain't, ain't new material. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to throw no side punches. My thing is, the woman is very, very talented. And it just doesn't seem like that special was written properly. It just, it was somebody speaking, cursing, and putting it out there. That, um, and that's, you know, however they're going to condemn me for my opinion, that's just my opinion. Uh, I would have loved to see her destroy it the way I know that she could, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. Yeah, and I think I, I saw, not even I think, I saw in the credits that her husband, Sydney actually co-wrote this special. So I think that is, you know, something to note there as well. Pierre, coming to you, you know, you know, we, we built up to this moment. Now it's here. What do you think, or what would you want to see Monique do next? Well, shout out to one of her writers, uh, Tone X. He's a dope writer. Um, I got, what, what, what's, what's the thing we do against me? Let me think. Uh, I, I hate to agree with Capone. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I hate to agree with Capone, but, um, but no, in part, he's right. You know, she's our sister, especially in comedy. I want her to shine. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fake it if she's not shining for those who need it to be faked. You know, if she does something, I feel like it's not really up to her, up to par, boom. Or maybe is this, is this the best she can do? Is it the best she can do? I don't know. I haven't seen her since she did the Queens of Comedy doing stand up. Um, but that th this right here, unfortunately, I believe the cursing to me overshadowed the, the act. It just overshadowed it. It just, you know, I, all I heard was that I was trying to find the jokes in between all that. And it was cool, you know, some material she had. But, uh, you know, like, like Capone said, I only watched like 10, 15 minutes of it, but it was overshadowing. The cursing was like too strong for me. It was just too much. It was too much for me. And, um, I think she's a talented, we all know she's a talented actress. I, you know, I want to continue to see her doing that. But if it's going to be stand-up, she needs somebody to maybe, you know, her husband or her to get together, you know, and write something. I don't know, just something, just something different. I just, you know, we'll find out in the comments, you know, her lovers, you know, people who love her, her fans will be in the comments calling me all kind of names, which I'm okay with. I'm here Monday through Wednesday, baby boy. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Danielle, last and certainly not least, uh, same question. You know, now that we've seen the special, it's been released. Monique got, you know, got what she was fighting for. What do you, what would you like to see her do next? I would like to see her make an appearance on Comedy Hype News. I mean, since this is one of the um, stations that has covered the special, I would love to see that. And for her to address some things, she don't even have to come on Comedy Hype News. She can sit down and do a one-on-one. -on -one. Just come on Comedy Hype. I'd love to see that. Um, and then I just think she just needs to live a life. I think she needs to leave the controversy between her and Tyler Perry and Oprah and even D.L. Hughley. Just leave that in the past and continue to put in your work, continue to focus on your work, continue to focus on your craft and building that out. Because it has been a while since we've seen Monique in stand up and it feels very refreshing to see her back there and to see her getting back into her acting bag. So she just has to continue to live. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. One of the things that I've been saying is I would really love to see her reconcile with black media 
specifically with comedy hype, if she's able to reconcile with the Netflix, you know, after them not paying her what she felt like she was owed and then all the things that happened on the back end, I would love to kind of see her make amends with some of the black media and specifically with comedy hype. And I would love to see her on here because obviously we love and respect her as an artist, as a comedian, you know, whether that's in, like um, Pierre said, and I hate to agree with you, Pierre, <laughs> but like Pierre said, we love to see her in movies. Um, you know, and, and I, we just love to see her win. Sometimes we give constructive feedback because that's what you do out of love. You, hey, I love you. I, I appreciate what you do, but this just wasn't it. And it's okay to have that. It's still all out of love. So I would love to see Monique on the show. I hope she watches this. And if so, Monique, our doors are always open as they always have been. So that's my piece on it. But as always, I appreciate y'all for chiming in. Pierre, don't shake your head. Don't shake your head. Capone, I'm starting with you. Capone, what do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? Uh, first, follow me on Instagram, Comedian Capone. If you can't spell comedian, you should know by now. Do not go any further with following me. That's number one. Number two, tonight, just got an indication tonight I am completely sold out at Salsa Con Fuego. That is a blessing knowing how big that club is, uh, I'm there. Mr. Rob Stapleton will be hosting and I'll bring up some of my friends, but uh, it's gonna be a great, great show tonight. And, uh, you know, every Wednesday, for those who don't know, I am still the host of Amateur Night at the Apollo. So I'm gonna start promoting the Apollo now because they gave me what I wanted and it's a great thing. So that's it for me. Well, congratulations to you, Capone. Pierre, I'm coming over to you. What What do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? All right, y'all catch me uh, in Chicago, uh, April Sunday, April 16th at Tavern at the Midway, it's right by the airport, Midway uh, Airport. And on the 21st, I'll be at Party HQ doing uh, two shows. So two shows in Chicago on that Sunday, growing a sexy crowd. If you're growing a sexy, come on through Tavern at Midway um, in Chicago, like I said, by the airport or Party HQ in Bowie, Maryland, two shows uh, on the 21st of April. Uh, so we working and, uh, you know, I'll have some good material without cussing so much. I can't stand you, Pierre Danielle. Last and certainly not least, what do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? Y'all see my face, right? <laughs> nice. And also, there's something we do in the Caribbean and it's called sucking your teeth or kissing your teeth. And it's, so that goes out to Pierre. Shout out to Pierre on the kissed teeth. Um, but <laughs> we call that's, America. We call that kissing ass. Tell Monique hi. <laughs> well, ah! it's it. Okay, Monique, will hire you. She she hire you. <laughs> Go ahead, Capone. Don't start it, Capone. Don't do that. <laughs> Starting to see why the comments would be the way they are. Yeah. And, anyway. <laughs> Capone, so, don't laugh like that, Capone. I love this. Go ahead, Danielle. Thank you so much, Symphony. So what I have coming up is do episodes of this on YouTube. Um, my YouTube channel is Danielle, D-E-N-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. I also have Comedy Hype every Tuesday here with Capone and Symphony. There's also Pierre that is here as well. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh gosh, and you can follow me on Instagram at D E E A Miller. Absolutely, I appreciate y'all. Y'all are Tuesdays are Tuesdays are getting close to Wednesdays, and I love it. I love it. No, but as always, I appreciate you all for chiming in on this topic. I do want to do a quick plug. I know we got to go. Um, but as far as what I have going on this Friday, another episode of Black Friday Report airs on Peach Street TV at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you tune in because I promise it's a good time and a show that you do not want to miss. But as always, I appreciate you all for chiming in on this topic. You heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts now that Monique has finally released her brand new Netflix special. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. You come for me, I come for you. <laughs> There'll be no crying on Comedy Hype. Big fan of the Comedy Hype News show? Well, now you can join us live in studio for lunch at Comedy Hype. Click the link down below in our description or go to our Instagram page and click the link in our bio for your chance to RSVP. I hope to see you here for Comedy Hype News. I'm Symphony Thompson.